For the ambitious tycoon, the start of a thriving empire is only ever one deal away. Exploiting gaps in the market and meeting demand is all in a day's work for a cunning entrepreneur. And expanding your business is necessary if you're to keep up with the times. But you won't be the only one looking to make it big. Competitors and self-sufficient towns will soon leave you looking for that next niche in the market. And a change of entrepreneurial tactics might be necessary to fend off financial collapse. However, be careful with your newfound direction. A poorly planned infrastructure will grind your business to a halt. And badly placed polluting industry will be sure to harm your reputation and quickly turn your business allies into foes. But the savvy business person will have all this under control with well-executed trade routes by road, water, air, and rail. And a well-targeted PR campaign will soon have those green towns and villages back on side and accepting your goods. All that's left to worry about is what you're going to produce next. For you are an industrialist and success is in your blood. And who knows what the next new day will bring in Rise of Industry. Hello there, ladies and gents, and welcome to America. I found an absolutely wonderful game here. I love tycoon games, and this is a game which satisfies me in every regard. It allows me to live my wonderful fantasy of playing America. What's that? Oh, it's oil! Oh my, oh, look at that, so much oil. So where are we going? Oh, is that more oil? I'm liking the oil, but let's get it closer. You can see where our headquarters are, and there's some wonderful oil here. Next to uh, some fish. Um, something tells me the fish aren't okay. Hmm. Oh, well, don't worry, we're a tycoon, so we're going to sell both the fish and the oil. Maybe we could package them together, because who doesn't like a bit of oily fish? So what to do now that we've found oil? Well, luckily we have this wonderful building here. For the low, low price of just under $200,000, we can build an offshore oil drill. So we'll just pop that down here on the coast. And now we can actually place the offshore oil towers for the low, low price of just 125000 Oh, God, the capitalism, it's melting away. Don't worry, we're going to place down, yeah, let's say three of these, because... That should do, and I'm afraid with the research we have at the moment, that's the maximum amount we can really build. But there you go. With the oil pump now being built, we can kind of take a look at where we can sell our oil. And luckily, in our local town of Longview, we can sell oil to the hardware store for quite a lovely price indeed. Just over a grand. Now, I mean, there would be better things out there, like selling raw cotton and raw rubber, but we just don't have access to that at the moment. Oh, and of course, what should we name our oil drill? Now, of course, we have to do the true British thing, and that is, of course, to name absolutely everything. And I mean absolutely everything, after the wonderful and late Princess Diana. So let us name this the Diana Memorial. Now, I wanted to fit in the Diana Memorial pump, but sadly it doesn't quite fit, but the Diana Memorial will do. Time to look at sending off our oil. How the system works is the pumps will fill boats up with oil, where it will then be refined and shipped onwards in towards the hardware store on the back of trucks. What a wonderful bit of capitalism we have here, ladies and gents. And the capitalism is about to continue as I use the greatest gift given to us by our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, to absolutely destroy the environment by flattening the terrain. <laughs> Just to place down a fisherman pier to harvest the wonderful resources of fish, placed rather close to oil. But you know, good bit of oily fish, I hear it's good for you. I'm sure the kids in the local village are going to love it. If they grow a few extra arms, you know, that's just bonus. That's evolution right there taking place. That's natural evolution if I've ever seen it. You capitalists should be very proud. Now for a brief word from our sponsors. Hey, you! Yes, you! 
Are you fed up with the same old Hoi4 videos over and over again, filling up your subscription feed? Are you honestly debating removing the implant that YouTube has installed in your mind? Or do you just want content that really makes you feel like you need to leave your bin? Well, worry no more, because have I got the solution to you. Here, it's the Spiffing Brit, the single most British channel ever on YouTube, and that's scientifically approved. If you want to help out the Spiffing Brit, then why not give the video a like, or subscribe, and watch your quality of life improve up to 20,000%. So what's the next logical progression of capitalism and its one true advantage? Well, that's technology. So we've just researched the ability to place down two extra harvesters for our offshore miners. Well, basically that means we can have two new oil platforms and two new fisheries plopped right in between them. Oh, and of course, let's name the uh, fisherman pier to the Royal Victoria Pair. Um, yeah, sure, that works for me. Now, I've just upgraded the roads to make it- oh my god, capitalism intensifies! The AI has just set up a rival logging camp next to my wonderful oil refinery, and they're using my roads! God, I can't believe the fact that capitalism allows them to do so. America, change your laws! This should be a private road, which can only be driven on by those willing to pay the wonderful ticket price of only $3.99. Since we last checked in, I've built two new wonderful buildings, a coal mine and an iron mine. Now this coal mine is dropping off coal to the hardware store in the local village, whilst the iron mine is sending the iron across the border. Of course they do need a name, and so sticking with the recurring theme, let's come up with something good, let's see. The, um, hmm, President Ob no, just the Obama, hmm, Obama coal mine, that... The Obama Memorial Mine, of course. Brilliant. What a stunning name. And what should we name the Iron Mine? We need to think of another equally good name. Let's see. Hmm, what about the Sanders? Yes, it's the Bernie Sanders Mine. The Sanders Iron Mine? Yes, that seems brilliant. So this is the Iron Mine that really enthralls American communism. And God, it, whilst it could be the enemy of capitalism, I'm going to use it against itself. And use it to generate capitalism. That's right in your face, communists. Now, I'm aware that we are actually facing a little bit of a financial crisis at the moment. But don't worry, the solution is always to be found in capitalism. And what's the best way to make money? Well, of course, is to spend money on two massive glassworks and smelters, which cost, yeah, 650,000 each. Ouch, that's really going to cripple our capitalist bucks, but oh well, we're going to have to spend them to sell them because steel, God, look at the price of that. That's worth so much more than just standard oil. So it's time to get producing and go to the next tier of resources. Oh, and... In true American fashion, the entire region of America has been hit by a hurricane. Which specifically will cripple the production of my glassworks and smelter. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Capitalism strikes again. Oh, what? Bad, bad maintenance. Is no one paying their taxes in this region? I mean, I know I'm not, but I'm a business tycoon. Everyone else should be, all the people buying the products. Oh my god. God damn you filthy communist tax dodgers! In true capitalist fashion, I must now name both of my smelters Dave and Steve the Smelter. They're both producing steel and hopefully these will be the two industries to actually turn a profit. And if that all fails, don't worry, we're just gonna start producing Coca-Cola instead. Okay, right, I'm going to be honest, steel wasn't making enough money, but luckily, I've researched the next cutting edge technology, cans. Now, what can we do with these cans? Well, we're going to get the oil that we already produce and mix it with the fish that we already produce and blend it into one lovely can which can be marketed and sold in the local town. And you know what? They're just going to love it. It's going to be brilliant. In fact, the civilians are willing to buy these these cans of oily fish at almost 80,000 capitalist bucks. And my god, is that impressive. So yeah, we're going to hopefully be turning a massive profit now. 
And for the first time ever, we are actually in the green and making money. Hopefully one day we'll pay off that loan, but you know, paying off loans isn't what capitalism is about. Really, capitalism is just about taking loans and then loaning that loaned money out to others. I mean, honestly, it's just the cycle of life and money and capitalism. Oh my, what's this? A little mission to deliver 17 steel to the small town of Eastville. How oh, very interesting. I mean, 17 steel is not that much. However, it is about a few months of steel production for my industries, but perhaps it's a possibility. They would pay almost 300% of the actual product price. Oh, there's Eastville. Oh, it is a little bit away, but I should be able to do it. And oh my god, 1.2 million for just completing it. I mean, we have got a few years to complete it in. Mm. Oh, and if we do fail, we do lose almost, yeah, over half a million. Oh no, <laughs> but that one million, oh, oh, should I take it? Yes, you know what, let's take it. Let's do this Eastville. I'm sure we should be able to do it, no problem. A few moments later. Well, I kind of sat on it and didn't have all of my steel producing plants sending to Eastville because I felt only one would be fine. And now we're less than a month away and we've, we've delivered only just over half the required amount. Like we're genuinely two, two months away from failure. Oh, luckily here's three more trucks to come in. Okay, so we're up to 14. Okay, that's good. We only need, we only need one more shipment. Okay, panic over, hopefully. Hopefully we can get the next sh shipment in because if we can't, that's like, that's like half a million down the drain. Oh, I think I can see it coming up the road. Yep, there it is. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Wow. Now, with this, we should have a fair bit more money floating around for us to waste. And, oh, there's another offer. Yeah, I'm not going to be taking that. But, thank God, we are 3.25 million up. Oh, my God. Capitalism, thank you for saving me once more. So what's next for Spiffco? Well, the Barrel Boy 2 Boogaloo is producing steel barrels and sending them to the ironmongering town. What a lovely way of generating a little bit of extra side profit. But it doesn't just stop there. So where's the money really at? Well, I believe it's found when you can produce some rubber. So I've placed down a few rubber orchards next to this road to just produce some raw rubber. Now, that's gonna then be sent back into the town, but where are we going to get the water from? Well, at the moment, we don't produce any water, so we're just going to buy water for the low, low cost of a few hundred each. Oh, it's a few grand, actually. Oh my god, water, why are you so expensive? Oh well, it best be worth it. And a bit of a news flash, it turns out selling raw rubber wasn't really that profitable. But the town has prospered so much they've decided to build a liquor store, which means I can now produce the greatest thing known to man, alcohol. And which is the easiest and probably most profitable alcohol to produce? Well, that would be wine, because it simply just needs grapes, and grapes just need water. So really that's just a three-stage step of production. That should be no problem.
And there we have it. For a moment there, we actually were down to just 10,000 US capitalist bucks. And if you can believe it, we've managed to claw our way back. And we're now up to 730,000. So yes, it just proves that really, whilst oil can be profitable, whilst cans and whilst steel barrels can be profitable, what really matters is booze, because God, does booze sell. It's so cheap to make. I mean, like, why isn't everyone doing it? Well, I'm, I know I will be after this. I'm going to be switching right over from tea production. I'm going to be selling all my shares in Tedleys. I'm just going to be investing them in booze. Because, I mean, it must be much more profitable, of course. Anyway, I am the Spiffing Brit. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a like because it's taken me a lot of work. It's something different. It's not the standard Hearts of Iron 4 content that you might be used to. And if you want to see more of these kinds of videos in your sub feed, then remember to hit subscribe. Anyway, I will see all of you in the next one. If you want any more Rise of Industry, give me a shout. If you have any more game recommendations that you want to see this kind of video format of, then please do tell me in the comments. Anyway, I will see you all in the next one.